Hello, welcome to the European Parliament, the Youth Voice video conversation. Guys, uh, today, this morning, I was told that you guys want to talk about uh, Japan, right? Yeah. So <laughs> tell me that's what uh, you are willing to talk. Uh, we just wanted to sort of look at uh, the difference uh, between EU-China relations and EU-Japan relations. Um, okay. As they're two countries geographically quite sort of similar or geographically quite close. Um, we thought, you know, the differences there are interesting to explore. Oh, well, that is something I can tell. That's, I think that um, the EU-Japan relations is much better than the yeah. EU-China yeah. relations. If you see the political system and the mentality, the Japanese they are very similar to, to, to the Western people. Yeah, I, I, think, I think very similar. I think it's one of the most important things that uh, they have a constitutional monarchy, which is I'm very close to, as a British, British yes. um, citizen mm -hmm. myself, it's very close to our own system of government. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, they had this sort of imprinting from the uh, American occupiers after the Second World War, mm -hmm. which did imprint some of the values of democracy and promoting democracy. And this has been their sort of goal for the last 50 years, mm -hmm. is pushing democracy. They want to be seen as a fair international democracy on the world stage. Mm -hmm. Um, it's one of the reasons why in 1996, I think, they became uh, only the third non-European country to become an observer on the European Council uh -huh. after America and Canada, um, first Asian country to actually do it. Um, and this is why the sort of goals politically are very similarly aligned, I think. What's your opinion on this? Well, it's interesting that Ed mentioned the Japanese. Um, intentions towards becoming an, uh, a friend of Europe and a friend of the Western powers. Mm -hmm. I think really uh, where it really boils down to is after the Second World War, Japan was in a, in a difficult place in a, yeah. a similar way to Germany was. Mm -mm. Their economy was in, 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 a, in ruins, as you might expect. Mm. They had to look on, back on, on what was really, I'm sure that the Japanese have and will admit, was a difficult period in their history, just as it was for the, the Germans. And the easiest way to get back on track was merely to align themselves with, um, with the Western powers who were willing to help them willing, them, willing them to become a democracy, so that they were, they, as the Western powers were desperate not to have another war. Mm -hmm. So they had an, a willing partner, and Jap Japan was happy to, to become a partner because they were, they were looking to get their, 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 their nation back on track as well. No, so. I, I absolutely agree. I think they had this sort of chance for a fresh start um, at creating something and becoming part of the University of Democracy. Um, and I think with uh, sort of the American occupying force there to sort of show them that there was this different model to take on. Um, and I think having this all sort of comes to head ahead in the Second World War, and I think with it having ended as it did, and then the Americans being there, that there was this possibility for a fresh start, you know, sort of some sort of hope out of the disaster, I think it's, the chaos. It's always very difficult when you're the aggressor in a war and then you lose, essentially, mm -hmm. just as the Germans did in the Second World War and the First World War, and, and the Japanese also in the Second World War. You come out, people always say, you know, uh, justice for the victors, but at the same time, particularly in, in these sorts of occasions, when you're an aggressor in, in this sort of you're left feeling very humble, I think, and, and quite, and your peoples are a little bit shaken. You're, there's very little foundations for you to go on because you, you've, you've spent most of your money on arms and things like that. And um, merely the point is, with the Japanese, they, 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 had, they needed a fresh start. The Chinese had a very different set of circumstances. They themselves had been, uh, had, had been fighting against Japan, but that was initiated by the Japanese. So they didn't have that feeling of uh, guilt, probably, I guess. And also, they didn't, they, they, economically, it wasn't so um, dis, dis, destructive for them. So they could pursue a similar economic, po a similar foreign policy as the Americans did mm -hmm. um, after the First World War in terms of distancing themselves from other superpowers um, and concentrating on their own country. Well, I, I think, think this is key in how the difference in how the EU looks and perceives um, China and Japan. Japan, for the last sort of 50 years, has shown a very harmonious relationship, a willingness to work with the EU and with the world at whole. What do you mean by harmonious? 
uh, I mean sort of Tranquil, very, um, it's been a very profitable and a very open and transparent relationship between common us. Common interests. We have a co common interests, not only economically, but also socially and uh, politically. Our, our political systems are, are fairly similar. And you look at this as a real sort of difference with China and their sort of isolationist policies, and yes, there is a movement towards them coming down. But I think if you really want to get to sort of the heart of how we view, uh, the EU views mm -hmm. China and views Japan, you look at it that we see Japan as a, a fairly equal partner, um, someone who we do have these multi, multi ties to. And your and opinion China. is the reason this happens is because Japan lost in the Second World War. Well, I, I, don't, think it comes, I don't think it comes down to as simply as they that. They were helped by the... But their government was in chaos, their uh, politics, their economics were in chaos. So they needed this fresh start, and the way they took it was on a very European basis. And this is clearly not what happened with China, which built itself in a different light. And yes, Europe does have very close economic trade ties with China, and we've discussed this before in a previous program. Are Europe afraid of China and, and, and I the think, EU? I think they're distrustful uh, of uh, that there might be ulterior motives. Um, I don't think there is that same sort of transparency in dealings, possibly because and we how have about had this. Military reason? Well, yeah, I, I think this is uh, as well. Um, Japan does not have a standing army, mm -hmm. partly because of its prohibitions from, uh, mm -hmm. from after the Second World War. China has mm -hmm. been rapidly expanding its military power, particularly mm -hmm. recently submarines. Um, and you have, as a European Union, as America, as the West, you have to look at that as possibly, potentially, one day a threat. You don't build an army unless you're intending to use it, I, mm -hmm. I think is the general philosophy that comes up. Um, also, I, I think adding to our distrust, or adding to a, a certain distrust that is out there, is certain human rights violations that China is perceived to have violated. Mm -hmm. um, it has a more negative image in the press. Japan hasn't had this. Japan hasn't yeah. been at war in the last 50 years. It, it hasn't had these human rights violations. And I think we are willing to look at them because of their transparent recent history. I see. In I a see. much more favorable light. It's, it's easy, Lin. It's easy, Lin, for, for, for us to be more trustful of Japan because the European Union has had a close relationship which has been built over 50, well, yeah, 60 years, I would say. 60 years, yeah. In which time Japan has said has set up a, a constitutional monarchy and a democratic system which is similar to the European Union and similar to the United States. And, uh, well, most specifically, it's a, I mean, it's a constitutional monarchy. It's very similar to, to England, to Britain. Mm. It, it, it's, a, it's a Western model of democracy. We can, we can understand it. It's not so intransient. You know, it's, uh, we find the Chinese political system uh, a little opaque. We, we're not entirely sure how it works. We're okay, not entirely but, sure. But, uh, but if you look at Japan um, inside of Asia, right, as one of uh, Eastern countries. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, Japan doesn't have good relations with other Eastern countries. Um, I think that Japan has very good relations with the USA, with South Korea, and with uh, European countries. Indeed. Yeah, so you can see that there is a gap between the mentalities of, of course, the East of and the uh, uh, I think Western this was countries. the trade off yeah. when it decided that this was the way it was going to go after the Second World War, that it was going to, mm. to follow more of a Western principle, Western rule. Mm. Um, that there was obviously always going to be a, a backlash to this, a slight gap. In fairness to Japan, they have shown very large um, development budget, development aid budgets, especially in, mm. uh, Asian, in the Asian area, in oh, the Asian really? sphere. Um, I think as a, as a, a democracy that itself developed so rapidly. are they going to They're very, help? Um, the developing countries inside of... Uh, I, I think as long uh, as they stay economically stable, yes, then, then yes, they will.